My guest today is Kevin Griffin. Kevin, how are you, my friend? I am doing well. It's a Friday, so that means the weekend is coming, and I've already had one cup of coffee, so I'm doing all right. It's funny how your life seems to parallel my life. I've had one cup of coffee. It's Friday here. I'm looking forward to the weekend. And I remember that uh, you and I became MVPs on the same day. We, we joined Inetta on the same day. We became officers of Inetta on the same day. Uh, we've been just following each other around for over a decade. So if all things work out in my favor, I will be renewed for my 15th MVP award. Oh, my goodness. At the beginning of July. Wow. So you could have been a 15-time MVP, David, if you Potentially, had just maybe. stuck to the course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was stripped of my MVP when I joined Microsoft. 10 pulled years away ago. so Jeez. that means that you and i have known each other for over 15 years that's uh that's, that's amazing it's been a while yeah uh and what so i understand you have a new project or a relatively new project this podcast let's talk about it sure uh so the name of the podcast is multi-threaded income and it's not your typical tech podcasts um i have always had kind of a uh, interest in personal finance and building a strong financial foundation for myself and for my family. And just through casual conversations with other technologists find I'm not alone in these sort of thoughts and conversations. Uh, Long, long time ago, I used to have another podcast called two frugal dudes talked about personal finance just for everyone who was interested. And that, that was fun. And we could always talk about that later if we want to, but we ended up killing that project and I always wanted to keep that conversation going. Mm-hmm. But since I live and breathe tech and I'm surrounded by technologists and we have seen the job market kind of deflating in, in the past year or two, I always thought I really like to do a podcast where I talk to people about how to use their amazing skill sets to build multiple streams of income. And when tossing around ideas for, for a title, it's like, you know, it's kind of like multi-threaded programming. Like I I'm one person, but I'm doing multiple things. And that's where multi-threaded income came from was like, Oh, this is a very tech centric way of explaining what it is we're trying to achieve. Okay. And uh, just to set some context, you are an independent consultant That's and trainer. That's that's your job. Absolutely. Yeah. About, uh, actually, I just had my anniversary 13 years ago. Wow. 13 years ago, I went independent and haven't looked back. Wow. Congratulations. When did you start this podcast? I started the podcast in September of 2023. Okay. And you're releasing what, uh, once a month, once a week, once a day. We, I try to do once a week, uh, but day job and stuff keeps me busy. So sometimes it's once every two weeks. Um, I try not to keep myself to a strict schedule just because that's just another thing to have to deal with. Uh, Uh, it also depends on interview availability and, and all that good stuff. But you know, if everything was right, it would be once a week. You mentioned interviews. That, that mean you have guests on the show and you ask them questions like like I'm doing here with you? Yeah. Uh, I try to – I have two different formats I'm playing with. One is the typical interview style where I talk to someone in the community who's kind of, kind of doing what the, the podcast is focused on. They have one or more uh, threads of income that they're running with. Uh, and then the second format is – kind of a just a topic conversation so to give you a good example uh, i have a friend we'll call him sean because that's why i call him on the podcast and sean asks a series of questions about what what it's like to go independent to become a consultant and i'll take one of his questions and i'll just talk about it for 15 20 minutes so like how should you incorporate should you have insurance what type of contract should you have um and the, the goal is really just to provide as much information and value to the listener as possible. 
tell me about the relationship between this podcast and your your last one, Two Frugal Dudes. Yeah. So Two Frugal Dudes started as a conversation with um, my friend Sean Marin. And it's just the so same not Sean, really just not the same Sean. <laughs> Sean's a very common name, right? So so Sean Marin and I would go out after user group meetings and we discovered that we both really had an interest in personal finance. So we would talk about in investing, we would talk about debt payoff, we would talk about just techniques that we had learned. Mm-hmm. And the ultimate goal of all this is just to have a solid financial foundation for, for my family um, right. and not be beholden to a day job for my means. Um, mm-hmm. And one thing you learn when you're having these conversations, and if you've ever gone to a conference and you've had a hallway track, so oh, yeah. much gets lost to the table. Like there's so much good conversation. It just gets lost to the table. And we decided, lost hey, let's the table, record. Mean, wait, that, that, that's a good phrase. I think you're saying that we walk away and we haven't captured that. We haven't internalized it. We, yeah. haven't, we haven't shared it with it's, other people. It's good for me. It's good for Sean. But the value of that conversation can't be shared with anyone else. So okay. the table is the like only it, lost thing to the that table. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that phrase. Table. Thank you for that. That's fine. Uh, so we started recording a podcast and we actually, you know, in a very small way exploded into um, a somewhat popular personal finance podcast. And we were focusing on everyone, like anyone who had money, was a target for our podcast and we we talked on a variety of subjects but uh, you hit this point with a podcast where it's like all right it's either a labor of love or it needs to start putting some food in my kids mouths and (laughs) why not we (laughs) well it could be both and it's like all right the podcast needs to start earning for itself to justify its existence okay and we were looking at various ways to try to give more value in exchange for a little bit of money in there. And we're trying to do this in a non sleazy way because there's a lot <laughs> of sleazy ways to take money from people and yes, not really give them the value in return. And that's just not how I was raised. It, I was raised to, you know, it is fine to charge someone money for something, but you need to make sure they get something for their money. Agreed. And when you have a name like two frugal dudes, it is really difficult. And I learned this, you know, just a hard lesson learned. It's really difficult to sell things to people who are basically a target market of frugality. So, <laughs> uh, so eventually we, like we made probably a couple hundred bucks. It was enough to pay the accountant basically. <laughs> and we ended up shutting down the entire podcast. Uh, Sean went off and he's doing amazing things right now. I've gone off. I'm doing all right for myself. I'm not complaining. But I still had this ambition to really want to talk about personal finance. And as I mentioned earlier, like the job market kind of is shrinking and there's ample opportunity for technologists to go off and start using their skill set to do other things and not be beholden to the day job. And that's kind of where multi-thread income sprung up was, can we talk about these concepts, but really niche it down to technologists and software development? Oh, tell me about some of the interesting things that you've uh, d- you dove into during the last nine months or so. Uh, so we talked to a variety of different people on the podcast, and there's a l- several different buckets that we kind of fill in this uh, this term multi threaded income. So the most obvious one is really independent consulting. It's the the people who take one of two different courses where they're either a freelancer to begin with, they're working their day job and then they do some moonlighting or independent freelancing uh, after hours or on weekends. And we will talk to people there about just how do you find your gigs? How much do you figure out how to charge? What are some of the issues that run in, you run into when you have a day job, that's your main priority. And then you have these secondary jobs that you're doing. Um, then there's some people that do the full independent consulting route. They just, they either have lost their job and they decide this is the way to go. I'll just go independent. 
uh, or they quit their job and decide to go fully independent. That's a, a whole bunch of stress sure. and things you're trying to get going right off the bat. Um, and it's a ser- it's a journey. It's a ebbs and flows just in terms of your funnel and who you're doing work for. Um, we have some people that have gone off to create their own um, products. So their own SaaS software as a service hmm. or actual software products that you, you install. And it's fun talking about the stories of how these different ideas come to be, because usually it's, uh, it starts as someone trying to scratch their own niche that so they have a problem. They build a product to solve their problem, realize, Hey, I can take this product and sell it to other people. And uh, there's guests with various levels of success with that. Some are just very early in that process and some have you know, crossed into the million dollar mark for the business just over, over time. Um, we have done talks with people who uh, run conferences uh, as, as businesses and how some of the dynamics of that. Uh, we've talked to book authors, we've talked to course creators and I keep saying we, it's like, it's me, but it's the, the community has you and your audience. along for the journey. Yeah. But we're really open to talking to anyone who's making money. I just recently did an interview with a very nice young lady who was in, at the beginning of the, um, uh, we dispensary business and actually building Weed. a product to that. And seeing, all right, there's some hardships here. Let's build something for an industry that technically didn't exist at the beginning and then had to build and, uh, and grow. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun talking to these, uh, these types of folks because they're solving problems and they're eventually building these into hopefully businesses that can go run by themselves. And they're just collecting the passive income from it. Yeah, I like I like how you threw in that qualifier. Technically, didn't exist. <laughs> Weed businesses existed for a long time. It's just been legal yes. in some. There's states no point of sales system years. for the guy on the corner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was the ultimate entrepreneur, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me about some of your other guests. Who, who I, I'm, I'm scrolling through, and I recognize a few of these names. I know uh, Jamie Wright, and I know. Um, Oh, Brian Gorman and uh, yep. Stephen Cleary. Lots of good people here. But uh... Uh, Jamie Wright was a very good uh, episode. Jamie Wright in particular is just an amazing human. Uh, he's Agreed. one of my favorite people in the world. Um, Jamie, what I love about his conversation was we went into it kind of with this nuance of, well, let's talk about the business aspect of it and the, hey, this needs to feed you. And Jamie was very much about look, I would gladly do any of this for free and just be, I'm getting paid just because I happen to be getting paid, but I would be perfectly happy doing all this work just for the, the fun and the, he called it the art of for building software of, for companies that building he would, software. He would do that for free. Okay. Well, if for his, uh, his own, his own products. Um, uh, so there's the, there's the means and then he's, he likes doing all the other things and he's, Got it. I think finding himself in this position now where he's able to work on and get paid for the thing that he really loves and enjoys doing. That's right. Why and not both? Yeah. <clears throat> so Jamie was definitely a great conversation. That's awesome. Um, I, I actually feel the same way when I became a technical evangelist, I got, I got this job where I was speaking at conferences and writing mm-hmm. and connecting with the community. I'm like, wow, I did this for years for free. And now I'm getting paid for it. What a I country. I still uh, don't get paid for that part of it. I still do that. <laughs> well, neither do I any, anymore. That was only about three or four years that I had my dream job. But how many people ever have their dream job? So, uh, so now who else have you had? Uh, who are some other interesting guests? Let's see. Uh, if I go down, um, there was a conversation with uh, Lucas Herman. Uh, Herman. I don't think I know he, Lucas. Um, he is, I actually found him on someone sent me an article and it was about a a stage timer, a timer product that was making um, like five figures a month. And I was like, all right, this is the type of guy I like to talk to. Got found a mutual friend of mine and Lucas's 
and um, we got connected. We did the podcast and Lucas, uh, in- really interesting guy. He was a developer and was doing something around, um, it was like conference and stuff. And people were having problems with stage timers just to keep track of, of time in different notes. And there was no industry standard for that, that type of product. Uh, so Lucas built a proof of concept and, uh, someone's like, yes, totally. I will pay you for this. And it just kind of grew up from there. So at its core, it's just a timer. It's keeping track of time. And then there's all these bells and whistles on top of it. And Lucas makes a pretty good living with him as the sole developer. Uh, his wife is involved as well with the, uh, with the project, but like they're doing pretty well for just what you would call a timer. And it was one of those overnight successes that took a long time. Like we, we were seeing the end of it, but we talked a lot about the process of getting to that point. And now he's out, he's going out and he's starting a second product right now. Um, And it's fun to kind of watch people in the middle of their journey and seeing, Hey, they're getting success now and they're just going to get more success uh, if they keep down this road. Oh, interesting. And I imagine that uh, on that particular podcast, I haven't listened to that episode, but you're talking less about the technology and how he built it and more about how he's monetizing it. Yeah. We're really interested in the business of software. Um, There's, there's plenty of crap out there talking about the tech and the tech to me is interesting, but also really boring. Like the implement, no one ever pays because they care that something's written in TypeScript or C sharp or, or Correct. are yeah. they using Next.js or are they using uh, um, Laravel? Like no one really cares about that. They care people about, care the, about the, the problem itself. Exactly. And that's what people pay for. So I'm so much more interested in the, hey, I built this uh, little product and it's useful to me. It's useful to other people. How do you price it accordingly? How do you get feedback from your initial customers? How do you find your initial customers? That's just so many little issues that like developers, we don't like that stuff. (laughs) Most developers don't want to go out and try to market to other people and try to get them to sell their thing. They much rather to an extent, just put something up open source and say, you know what? I I don't think this is very good, but here it is for everyone. uh, (laughs) That's that imposter syndrome thing. Yeah. Uh, You mentioned earlier on that uh, you wanted to monetize this podcast. How's that happening? Uh, at the moment, it's not, uh, but oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a long, it's a win hearts and minds first. Okay. And then I think uh, multi-threaded income is more positioned to be good for some sort of coaching program. Um, we're, we're trying to build up a, a community first of just people who are interested in the subject and helping them through their journeys. And then eventually everyone hits this point where they just need more help. They need more, more hands-on, deeper advice. And that's a great opportunity for coaching. And coaching is kind of the, the first like level up. There's group coaching where you just get people into quote unquote masterminds where they can talk amongst themselves and you're the spiritual guide for, for their journey. Um, people get, I've gotten a lot of value out of stuff like that. People just in general get value out of that. There's also built in accountability. So if you say, I'm going to have X, Y, and Z done by the end of next week, if we come to the end of next week and you're not done, I'm going to, I'm going to fuss at you and say, well, what's the problem? Why, why didn't you get that done? You're holding yourself back by not accomplishing these tasks. Uh, there's a level up from that. And it's just in uh, solo coaching where it's one-on-one with a, with a different person. Uh, there's ample opportunity for things like courses. Uh, I have two or three course ideas I'd like to do focused around multi-thread income and just starting one of these side threads, um, whatever it might be. Like consulting is a good one for me. I've been an independent consultant for 13 years. I can talk very fluidly about anything dealing with that. Um, I have a plethora of friends who have done the same thing kind of bounce ideas off of. And I think I could build a very good structured course in how to get started down that path. Um, the, and the, but the big reason I haven't gone down that path is I don't have, 
I need the audience to sell to. So the podcast is about just selling the dream and finding people that are living the dream and showing that the dream isn't out. It's a dream, but it's not outside the scope of your capabilities as, as a normal person. Um, so let's sell that dream. Let's get the, the community engaged and, and built up and then start offering better products to that community to, to help them on their journey. Okay. So building the audience first, and then you'll start uh, marketing to that audience. Once yep. they're, once they're hooked. Um, I'm looking at this uh, multithreadedincome.com, which is the domain that you have. And it's I see that there. It's a horrible website, by the way. It, it's, oh, no, it's, it's not horrible. It has, it's, it's very functional. simple. I love simple yeah. simplicity. Uh, and there's a link here for your podcast, of course, but there's also a link for a YouTube channel and a Discord channel and uh, articles. Yep. Uh, what is it? Is this the same content uh, that you're just? YouTube, yeah, YouTube is the same content as on the podcast. We just mm -hmm. cross post to different places. Everyone consumes content differently. Uh, some like to listen to it. Some like to watch it. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure we we cover all those different bases. Um, the Discord is where the community's at. Anyone's welcome to come hang out in our Discord, ask your questions about starting anything. Um, actually, some good podcast episodes have come from the Discord. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I would love it if people jumped in and talked about um, what they're running into and we can have a discussion there. The there's a section for articles. Like I had this ambition that I was going to write articles after all the different um, episodes mm -hmm. just to keep the SEO juice going. But you know, SEO is dead, right? Cause AI and <laughs> I didn't really start doing that. And I should have taken the link off the website, but I, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, uh, the, uh, and then I'm, I clicked on the podcast and I see there's a list of episodes. Um, you've got 40 of them out so far. Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and then also there's a link for people, which I think is really interesting. I, th I think I might steal this idea as well, where you have a list of every guest that you've ever had on the show and um, a little blurb about who they are, some links to their social media accounts and websites. And everybody so far, because you've, you're you're only you're less than a year into this, everybody has appeared in one episode except for Chad Carter, who's appeared in eight episodes. Who is Chad? So Chad, uh, a good friend of mine, he was there at the very beginning, and we were uh, we started having an, an interview episode, and then we would have like a commentary episode okay. where we would talk a little bit deeper about whatever the guest kind of touched on, and. Chad was there for some of those initial conversations as was Sean Marin. He, he was there at the beginning of the journey as well. Um, but yeah, you know, like we had learned kind of early on the commentary episodes were taking away a lot from the, the content. And so we did away with the commentary and it just mm -hmm. ended up being me moving forward. Oh, okay. Um, now, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, but multithreadedincome.com is the main website. Podcast.multithreadedincome.com is the, the way to get directly with the podcast. And I uh, see so you have a subscribe button right at the top here. Yes, we do. Uh, with, anywhere uh, you get your podcast from. Yeah, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Amazon. Um, or you can just listen to it right here in the web browser, I think. Yep, that works as well. I would love for everyone to subscribe. Like that just helps everything. Um, I will, and so will all of my tens of viewers. I appreciate each and every one of you. <laughs> uh, very cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you really want to tell people about this? Uh, probably not. It's a it's a labor of love for me. I love talking about the business of software and putting it into terms that. Um, normal people can can talk about. Um, I did a conversation at CodeMash this past year, specifically on multi-thread income, and we talked about the various ways you can make income. And I got a, an amazing reception to to that talk. Um, I wish more conferences would pick it up because I think it's a very beneficial set of skills that people mm -hmm. can develop over time. Um, but 
yeah, it's really led the way to you know, doing more and more of these episodes. Every time I push an episode out, if I hear something good about the episode, I know I'm doing something right. Yeah. And it's just a great way for me to give back to the community that's helped me so much over the past 15 plus years. Kevin, thank you so much. It's always good to talk to you. You too, David. Thank you. Multi-threaded income. Stay connected with your friends while leveraging technology to build multiple threads of income.